If you're planning your first vacation through Greece, I would recommend visiting Athens, Crete, and Santorini. Here are my favorite things to do and restaurants to try at each location for a well-rounded experience. When you arrive in Athens, you're going to need to decide whether you want to take the metro or a taxi into town. If you decide on the metro, Manastiraki Station is likely going to be your main stop if you're staying in the old town. It'll be an hour journey door to door. The average taxi is about 40 euros and the journey will be anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. Monastiraki Square is the heart of the old town and there's loads of winding alleys lined with shops, restaurants and bars. If you're tight on time, I would start with the Agora of Athens. It's easy to get to, and there's a charming museum that you can get through easily without a huge time commitment. For 30 euros, I purchased a combined ticket, which was valid for five days from the date of purchase. It allowed me to visit all of the ticketed archaeological sites in central Athens. The Agora's initial use was for commercial, assembly, or residential gatherings. There are lots of smaller ruins and excavation sites scattered around the old town, all within a 15 minute walking distance. So if you're interested in ancient ruins, you should definitely start with the Agora of Athens. At the foot of the Acropolis, the neighborhood of Plaka is something that you just can't miss. It's an old historical neighborhood with adorable shops and restaurants. It's known as the neighborhood of the gods. The Athens flea market spans across the old town, but the official entrance is right next to the Monastiraki metro station. Flea market only in name, this area is more like a winding alley of shops, trinkets, and eateries. If you're looking for souvenirs to take home, this is the perfect place to pick up little gifts and Greek-themed trinkets. If you want something a bit more authentic and less made in China but sold in Greece, pick up a local piece of art instead as a souvenir. In the old city, you'll notice lots of street art and independent antique shops. If you want to avoid the crowds, your best bet is to visit the archaeological sites and museums in the early morning, and then head over to the flea market before 2 p.m. This way, you can catch a late lunch at one of the local restaurants that line the walkways. It is just a one hour flight to get to the island of Crete from Athens. The flight is typically less than $100 per person, which makes it a great, affordable option for a two-week trip through Greece. Crete is the largest Greek island, and it is best known for its unique cuisine and breathtaking beaches. Thalassino Ajeri is my favorite restaurant in Hania. It's so romantic and the sunset is unbelievable. Be sure you pre-book as it's always packed with people. Elephanisi Beach is a tourist favorite in the summertime. It's best known as the beach with the pink sand and crystal clear turquoise water. However, I will say that the sand isn't as pink in real life, but that doesn't mean it's not worth enjoying. 
Tamias is a small rural taverna just 20 kilometers from Hanya that specializes in traditional Cretan food. The menu is different each day and based on what's fresh that season. Nevertheless, you just have to try the snails. Feeling adventurous? Take a road trip to Plaka Beach on the opposite side of the island for breathtaking beaches. You can hang out all day with complimentary beachside service. If you want to escape the crowds, head down to the southern part of Crete. There are several quaint beach towns that locals flock to during the bustling high season. To get from Crete to Santorini, your best bet is to take the ferry from Heraculon. It's often more affordable than flying and it's a relatively easy trip. While you're in Heraculon, be sure to take a walk down the harbor. You'll see the coolest fortress, which is a former Venetian castle. If you're looking to disconnect from the world while in Crete, head to the east side of the island. It has fewer tourists and you'll still get to enjoy Crete's perfect turquoise water. Perhaps one of the most remarkable beaches on Crete is Seton Limania Beach. It's a steep walk down the cliffside, but the view is unbeatable. Come early with a towel to claim your spot before it gets too crowded in the afternoon. You won't be disappointed. Santorini is an Instagrammer's dream. The lush white buildings make it perfectly picturesque. During high season, you can barely walk in between the buildings. The vibe in Santorini is all about luxury. You should expect to pay upwards of $100 a night for accommodation with a view. If you want to get away from the Instagrammers and the inflated prices for accommodation, but you still want to enjoy scenic views, you should stay in a Merovigli. My number one restaurant recommendation would be Sunset in Amudi Bay. Don't get duped into going to Fish Tavern in Amudi Bay. It's double the price for the same food and worse service. Brusco. It's a little cafe tucked in the mountains and the coffee there is unreal. When you get tired of the Instagram game, come here for a relaxing afternoon. All in all, Santorini was a beautiful and romantic place to spend a few days, but I'm not sure if I'll be back. The vibe here is much more suitable for luxury seekers and beach bums. And if that's you, you're going to have an amazing time. I would recommend that you budget $150 to $350 per person per day if you're planning a vacation in Santorini. After all, paradise isn't cheap. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Check out this next video to enjoy more wealth and wanderlust content.